Hey guys, Sharon McLaughlin here, Dr. McLaughlin from Sharon Mac Wellness. This month in my Facebook group, we are going over detox. We're doing a detox challenge, a detox review. So every day there's a post. I do these challenges once a month. So if you're interested, take a look at the show notes down below and you'll get some information. Also, if you stay until the very end, I have a free ebook that I think that you'll really enjoy. It's packed with information. So in our home, we're exposed to all different rooms, right? Kitchen, products there, laundry room, products, garage. So let's go through some of these and why I wanted to talk about this today. See, we're exposed to these chemicals on a regular basis and most of us aren't even aware of it. Antifreeze, you've heard of, right? It has ethylene glycol in it. And you know that if children were to uh, be exposed to it, that it would cause esophagus problems. Same thing with Drano, you know, the drain cleaners that are found typically in the pantry or underneath the sink. But in addition to that, just the inhalation, it can damage our lungs. Sometimes people complain about dizziness and it actually can lead to problems with kidneys. Um, so you really have to be careful about what you're using in your home and how you're using it. So one of the best things that you can do is when you're using it is probably do it in your driveway. If you're going to put some antifreeze into your car, put it, do it in your driveway because what that does is it allows the air to circulate around you so that you're not inhaling it. I'm a big fan of wearing some mask when you're doing things like this, you know, as far as deep cleaning and definitely using these chemicals. So you really have to be careful with it. Now, antifreeze itself, it has a smell to it, right? Because people want, you know, you basically the manufacturers, they want, um, want it to be aware, you want you to be aware that there's antifreeze and perhaps a leak or something. So unfortunately with that, like even pets, they can start licking the antifreeze if it's on your driveway. So just be really careful with that. Motor oil is another one, right? It's petro, you know, it has some heavy metals in it, such as copper and zinc and uh, magnesium. So again, you really have to be careful about this. This can These types of heavy metals are known to cause nerve and kidney damage, all right? And we also worry about an increased risk of certain types of cancers. So be careful with doing your motor oil. Same thing, a mask and gloves. What about just, uh, you know, doing some work around the house? Latex paint, we know is a problem, right? It's anything that basically that uh, you bring into your home that you feel like, oh, you know, this is bothering my lungs or has a really strong smell to it. Chances are, it's probably not good for your health. And even some of the water soluble paints now, they can be highly toxic as well. See, some of them have, um, let's see, they have volatile organic chemicals in it, and it's that smell that really bothers you. As far as some of the latex paints go, they can emit formaglehyde, and we know that formaglehyde, it's a preservative, and not typically found in food, but for, you know, uh, they use it typically in labs. We know that that increases our rate of cancer. It's called a carcinogen. So again, be careful about what type of paints you're using in your home. The oil type of uh, oil-based paints, they typically need solvents to make them dissolve and they can be irritating to our eyes and skin. And again, if you have cracks in your skin or some open wounds, unfortunately that can go into your skin and your body can absorb it. Our skin does a great, uh, great job as far as protecting us. But again, if we have open wounds and stuff, it's a problem. If we're inhaling it, there's really no way to prevent that. So be careful, open air areas, like if you're painting, open up the windows. And just be careful, you know, wear the proper equipment such as masks and whatnot. Some of the oil-based paints, like you, you may be in the room and be like, oh, I'm a little dizzy. I have a headache from this. And it all makes sense. It really has to do with what you're exposed to and the levels that you're exposed to. So just be careful. Same thing. We know that there's been problems with kidney, liver, and even some blood disorders as well. So remember, doors open, windows open, and really you wanna keep pets away as well as small children. What about the batteries? Some of the batteries that are in our car, you know, they have acid in it, sulfuric acid. Again, we have to be careful. There's some um, electrolytes in the batteries as well, and we know that they can be some explosive gases. So again, be careful with all this type of equipment open windows, open garage doors, and try to do the work outside. As far as batteries exploding with the sulfuric acid, that can cause blindness, it can cause uh, burns in our skin. I used to work in a burn unit, so we have a fair amount of burn, you know, burns obviously, but some from even from exploding batteries, so you just have to be careful. In the battery itself, there's some lead. We know that lead absorption can cause problems as far as learning, learning disorders, we also know that it can accumulate in our body and it's difficult to get rid of. 
one of the things is just make sure that uh, you never break the seal of the battery and that you keep children and pets away, especially if you're storing these batteries. Another thing with the car, windshield wiper, right? And we have this in our house as well, but with the windshield wiper, it's different in the cars because we don't want it to freeze. So it's all different types of gases, methanol, ethylene, glycol, isopropanol. These are problems as far as um, when we're inhaling them, they cause problems with our nose, our mouth, our throat and also has been shown to cause problems with our nervous system, kidney, liver, heart, brain, just about all organs, right? So again, we want to be careful with that. Um, be careful with the storage. Be careful of what you're exposing yourself to. And I know I keep saying it, but just making sure you're doing this uh, not in a small room. When you're in a small room, we'll get into this when we talk about the bathroom as well. It really is a problem as far as circulation of air and then inhaling these gases as well. So let's go into our house now. Laundry detergent, right? There's some enzymes that help break down some of the, um, the dirt. And that's great for as far as cleaning, but it's not great for us. Again, some of these can cause vomiting and convulsions and shock. So you really have to be very careful as far as ingesting these. Then even inhaling them as well. If you look at, uh, you know, the National Institute of Health, uh, people that have asthma, they're more prone to developing problems such as the detergents. And I'm sure you've seen, or I know myself, like I have a very small laundry room when I go in there and I'm working with the soaps. I try to use soaps that aren't as toxic, um, but my husband is never on board, so occasionally I use some of that and really my, it, you smell it right away. It's just not good for you. So just be careful. I think the best is always prevention, being careful about what you're actually bringing into the home. All-purpose detergents, same idea. Some of them are disinfectants. Some of them have solvents in it so that they can cut through the grease. A little Dawn here and there is absolutely fine. But when you start adding in ammonia or ethylene glycol, or I, don't, I can't even pronounce some of these, monobutyl acetate, uh, sodium hypochlorate, trisodium phosphate, it's a problem. They're irritating to our skin, our eyes, and our throat. And they could be deadly as far as pets and children swallowing them. So again, be very careful about what you're bringing into the home, all right? And one thing you don't want to do is when these manufacturers are making these, you know, mixing the ingredients, they're sort of safety tested. They're okay by themselves. But when you start mixing cleaners together, it really could be a problem, such as like mixing bleach and ammonia. That's just an example, but that really can cause long-term chronic that never goes away damage to your lungs. So again, just be very careful. Plus on top of that, when you're mixing uh, those types of substances or ingredients, you can get gases too. And they're gases that you wouldn't, ex you know, wouldn't expect to see, such as chloramine, and they really can cause a lot of the damage. So just be careful that never mixing. And as far as any uh, oversight, when it comes to these cleaning ingredients, the manufacturers are responsible for determining whether a product is safe or not. There's really no good testing on it. So you just have to be careful in small amounts, probably fine if you're protecting yourself. But when you start using multiple different cleaners at one time, even if you're not mixing them, it really can become a problem. We know that bleach, bleach is really good as far as killing mold, right? But it's a problem. It's why it has such a strong smell. It has vapors in it liquid bleach and vapors, they cause skin irritation, sore throat. Um, you know that yourself, if you get it on your skin, it burns. And definitely if people ingesting it as far as pets and children, it can cause long-term esophagus injury, so much so that the esophagus itself is eroded, basically have to replace it with some intestine. But they can do free flaps as well. That's another story. All right, so we talked about mixing household ingredients. We don't wanna do that. As far as pets go, um, even the the medications that we use, the soaps that we use, the shampoos, as far as like the ticks, really have to be careful. Even those little, um, how do I say, these little containers that we put on the dog in the back there, they can contain chemicals that are really dam damaging to our health. They can cause um, neurological injury and they can cause headaches. So you really want to be very careful when you're doing this. Always wash your hands, wear gloves, but then on top of that, make sure that the one that you're using for your pet is the appropriate size. All right. So this way you don't go, you know, um, overdosing your dog with the type of uh, the tick and flea treatments. 
insecticides, so many pesticides that we're using, same idea, they're filled with chemicals, so you really have to be careful, a lot of headaches, dizziness, and again, they too are associated with neurological injury, so you have to be careful with that. Let's move on to the kitchen, dishwasher detergent. They typically have phosphate in it, same idea, because the dishes have grease, there's solvents that break through the grease, right? So they work good as far as getting rid of the grease, but they're not typically good for our health, so again, you really wanna be careful of that. Oven cleaners, probably one of the most dangerous things in your kitchen. And again, they're filled with chemicals such as lye and potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. Again, you really want to be careful as far as tissue damage goes when you're using these oven cleaners. Clean your oven on a regular basis. So if I'm cooking something and it spills, I'll wait till I'm done cooking, let the oven itself cool down and then I'll wipe away that mess. So I try to do it on a regular basis. This way I feel like I don't need to do heavy duty oven cleaning because it really is a problem as far as the fumes for our lungs go. Antibacterial cleaners, the same idea. Um, they have filled with surfactants, they have pesticides in them, they could cause damage to our skin. Um, There's some substances that are actually being investigated now such as like the quaternary ammonium. I think, uh, Diane Feinstein was very big on that. And some chemicals as well, such as phenols. Again, it doesn't really matter what the components are, just that they can irritate your skin, irritate your eyes, hurt your, um, you know, your airways, and that's a problem. Window cleaners, glass cleaners, the same I think. So whenever you're cleaning your home, try to make the, you know, the windows open, the doors open, but they're filled with chemicals too that can really hurt us. You can just take some, um, a small amount of rubbing alcohol and some water and you can make glass cleaner that way actually so a lot of my products in my home i just make i typically just use a lot of water maybe a little dawn sometimes i will do like some baking soda to try to make a scrub right like that makes a pretty nice scrub so it's just baking soda a little dawn some water or just try baking soda first by itself or a little dawn by itself dawn is really good as far as diluting it just a small couple of drops and it's really good for an all-purpose cleaner and then really what we talk about is like the elbow grease really getting your elbows in there and kind of doing the hard work rather than relying on chemicals Chemicals. Also in your kitchen, if you're going to be using bait traps in a wall, you really have to be careful. They are filled with chemicals as well that can really hurt us. And you have to be careful around those when it comes to food, making sure that it doesn't get on, get on your fruits and vegetables, which can be harmful to our body as well. In the, in the bathroom, whether it's bleach, toilet bowl cleaners, again, they're filled typically with um, chemicals that are damaging to our body. Disinfectants, we really have to be careful of. They can hurt our immune system. They're great as for killing bacteria, but they can hurt our immune system as well if exposed to on a regular basis. So again, we wanna just do small amounts, open up the windows, and really try to avoid them altogether. If no one's sick, don't use a disinfectant. You probably don't need it on a regular basis. Just by cleaning, you know, wiping things down, diluting is the best way to go. When people are sick it's a, if, and you're trying to prevent spread from one person to another, especially in tight areas such as bathrooms where everyone's using the same appliances or however you want to say it, faucets, it's a different story. You may want to consider using some disinfectant then. But in general, on a regular basis, daily basis, you don't need to do that. So just something to keep in mind. Um, mold and mildew review, uh, removers. In my home, I typically use... Um, what do you call it, like a, a vin vinegar, like 5% vinegar. It's a, it's usually, um, I should say it's 5% acidic. I may dilute that with some water, but that's great as far as killing off mold in the shower. I use it as an after shower spray. I am careful with my appliance, like the faucets and all. I don't know if I can tarnish that. You always have to be careful. When it comes to faucets, I usually just take a little bit of Dawn, and I dilute it, just a couple of drops with a lot of water, and that's how I usually clean the faucets themselves. Remember, when it comes to cleaning, you need um, fluid, right? And you need some friction as well. And the little Dawn soap, that helps as far as breaking down the dirt itself. So sometimes just by wiping it, it's not enough. You really wanna to try to break up the dirt as well. So it's diluting, wiping, and then having something that's gonna break up that dirt, all right? And Dawn will do that. So just remember, you could try some vinegar in your home. You don't necessarily have to use bleach at all. Drain cleaners we spoke about, they have lye in them, they have sulfuric acid in them. Again, very damaging to our skin, our eyes, 
and they could be deadly if they're swallowed. So you really have to be careful with that. Rugs, upholstery cleaners, problem, and I'll get into this in another talk as far as within our home, we have a lot of flame retardants. So because of that, that gets into our air and it increases our pro rates of problems with our lungs, volatile organic chemicals. But in the home itself, as far as using upholstery cleaners, same idea, even the dry cleaning. That's why you, maybe you see in your neighborhood that a lot of the dry cleaners have sh started shipping out. Um, there's laws in effect because they're damaging, because they can go into the drain, because people are exposed to them. And good dizziness and uh, headaches, disorientation. So again, you really just want to be careful about what you're using. When it comes to the furniture cleaners, same thing. Doors have to be open and just a small amount. Furniture polish, they too have like a lot of distillants in it of oil. And we know that they have, you know, they can have our nitric benzene in it. They have petroleum distillates typically, right? The same thing as like the oil and gas, why it's bad for us. They too can cause some problems with your eyes and throat. There's different ways to do furniture polish. And maybe what I'll do is in my next um, lecture, what I'll do is we'll talk about some more ingredients that we can do as far as just using things around our, our home for our, a good furniture polish. Air fresheners, they have a lot of formaglide in it. They have petroleum distillates. Um, they have phthalates in it. They get into the air, they get into our lungs. And again, real problems as far as our health goes. Typically what I'll do is just a small amount of essential oils. I'll keep it in the bathroom with a little bit of um, oil. And so there's constantly, there's some um, nice scents to it. And I don't really have to worry about air fresheners themselves. So again, be careful with that. Same thing with those floggers. If you're gonna use them, make sure you get out of the home. We can go in and talk about like our bedroom as far as clothes go with the moth balls. They smell, right? There's a reason for that. It typically can cause headaches and dizziness. And the same thing, moth balls aren't typically the best. They have a substance in it called dichlorobenzene. So again, not, so, not the best um, for our health. So just be careful as far as packing clothes away. Typically don't need mothballs if you're you know, packaging them away, they're in plastics and you know maybe even some plastic containers. I wouldn't suggest eating out of plastic, but that's another talk. Outside, our pool, right? All the chemicals that we're using, um, chlorine, again, just being careful. The algicides for our pool that kill off again bacteria and mold, we really have to be careful of. The insect repellents, small amounts. Teed is recommended, but again, small amounts. You don't want to be putting a ton on your skin, all right? And there's other things that you can do as far as a natural way to repel uh, bugs. I have a lot of mint in my yard. Bugs don't like it. I, um, we have bats, so I put up a bat home, which is great because they love the mosquitoes. You kind of need to look at as well. But there's different ways that you can do as far as um, avoiding the pesticides. As far as little bugs on your plants, you can, again, use some uh, water, some Dawn, and kind of just spray it on. They typically don't like the soaps. So it's good, and it washes off the plants, you know, when, it, um, when there's either you have a sprinkler system on or when it rains. Weed killers, a small amount of salt. You can do some uh, vinegar as well. That's great for a weed killer rather than using something like Roundup. So it's a few different things, a few different helpful hits, hints or tips to get you started as far as increasing awareness of what we're exposed to on a regular basis. Remember, in small amounts, none of this is that bad, but when you start laying right, laying right, and you think of all the times throughout the day that you're exposed to things, it really does add up. So I am concerned the best way is always prevention, not bringing it into your home to begin with. Again, this is Dr. McLaughlin from Sharon Mac Wellness. You can follow me at Sharon Mac MD. I have a wellness course that you can find at Sharon Mac Wellness, and I'll put it in the show notes down below. All right, guys, I'll see you on another video. Bye-bye.